Today we're going to learn how to use sour mix and acidity to balance out those sugars in your cocktails. Stay tuned. Brought to you by AwesomeDrinks.com. Check out learn.awesomedrinks.com to learn more about cocktails. Welcome to Calm Man Cocktails, and I'm Derek, and this series is designed to kickstart your journey into home bartending. Or, if you want to become a real bartender, learn some information here at no cost to you and be able to go out and get a career. And then send me some of your tip money. I mean, seriously, tip money would be great. Don't forget, like this video. If you're on learn.awesomedrinks.com, there is a like button. There's a place to leave some comments if you have any questions. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos all the time. You can like on YouTube too, so don't be wary of that button. Clicky clicky. So if you remember in our last video on sugar, sugar was one of the main components to a cocktail. The definition was spirits, sugar, water, bitters. Let's improve that by bringing in sours into the mix. <laughs> There's a pun there. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't start this trend. You could blame Jerry Thomas for that. He wrote a book. It was called How to Mix Drinks. It's a vintage website that shows all these old books if you want to see them. I think it's on learn.awesomedrinks.com in this specific video, uh, so you could probably find it in there. But anyway, what Jerry Thomas did is he defined a bunch of categories. He defined a fix, a fizz, a daisy, and a sour. And if you watched any of the recent videos we did on a gin fizz and a gin fix, you are familiar with this information. But I will assume you're not and familiarize you now. The concept was simple. A fizz or fix or whatever it is, you can put gin, you can put bourbon, you can whatever your favorite spirit is. You can literally take this base recipe and say, I want a gin fix. Boom, you add gin. I want a bourbon fix. You put bourbon there instead. But all those specific categories called for a sour component. Nothing so special about that. The guy figured out how to put acidity in a drink. But all of those are the core for pretty much every cocktail that exists. Look at a daiquiri. It's basically a rum sour. Margarita is a tequila sour. Whiskey sour, well, it's got it in the name. We just make it look cooler nowadays, whatever. The only one Jerry Thomas didn't really mention was vodka. And that's really just, it's because it's vodka. No, honestly, it wasn't because he didn't like vodka. It was just vodka didn't become trendy until the 40s. This book was published in 1860. Do the math. I mean, let's face it, vodka's like Meg from Family Guy. It's there, it's boring, and nobody really likes it. And nobody really has anything good to say about it. So some of the differences between those Jerry Thomas categories would be the use of either club soda versus that of uh, egg whites versus that of straight up citrus. And that redefines the category of what a cocktail really is to become alcohol, sugar, acidity, and bitters. We don't need to really talk about water. It comes through the dilution process, usually with ice. But some cocktails, old fashioned, do call specifically for water or club soda or fizzy water or tonic water or ginger beer. You get it. So let's talk about sours, and this is kind of chemistry at a very high level. So we're gonna start with citric acid. It's a core element of sour cocktails. Both lemons and limes have citric acid. Matter of fact, so do a lot of syrups because it's a good preservative. And a lot of flavored water has it too. Interesting fact, the pH of a lemon is lower than that of a lime. And what that typically means is to get the pH levels correct, to get that balance, you typically need to add more lemon to a cocktail than you do lime. So it's not abnormal to see a cocktail that calls for three quarters ounce to one ounce of lemon, and a cocktail similar to that probably calls for a half ounce of lime. From an acid perspective, lemons are almost pure citric acid. 6% of the entire lemon is citric acid. No other real acids. Limes are a hybrid. They're a citric acid and a malic acid. 4% citric acid, 2% malic acid. Why does that matter? Wait a second. Grapefruit only contribute 2.5% citric acid, so their acidity level is a lot less. Although people seem to think grapefruit's more bitter and sour, it's really not. Which is why a lot of cocktails calling for grapefruit require a lot more grapefruit than they do other citrus. A great example is a Greyhound. A Greyhound cocktail is going to either be a gin or it's going to be a vodka and it's all grapefruit. It's four to six ounces of grapefruit. You try putting four to six ounces of lemon in there balanced against one to two ounces of vodka and you're probably going to lose your mind. But you can also hybrid that up. A Dorchester cocktail, one of my favorite cocktails, our favorite cocktails on the channel, actually has both a lemon and a grapefruit. It's a half ounce of grapefruit and three quarters ounce of lime. So it's gonna be sour and tart, but it fills out nicely. A combination of different citrus adds a lot more complexity to a cocktail. That's just science. You can also buy powdered citric acid and just for curiosity's sake, it tastes like lemon. I use citric acid in powder form 
to clean copper. And a little goes a long way. It's also used in some syrups, some homemade DIY syrups. So it's always nice to have a little bit of powdered citric acid on you. Well, not on you, because it would probably start to agitate you after a while. The next big one is malic acid. I foreshadow that with the limes, so here we go. Malic acid actually has a higher sour taste. So you're gonna get more sour lingering if you have a drink that has a lot more lime in it than lemon in it. A margarita is a great example. That sour just keeps on giving. And if you use too much lime in a margarita, it gives really bad. The biggest fruit that contributes malic acid is actually apples. Just bite into a Granny Smith apple. That acid, that's malic acid. A lot of professionals and foodies define malic acid as a refreshing sour. So it's like you want to keep sipping more and more of it. It's what draws you in. And some more tasting notes. If you want to grab yourself some malic acid powder and put it in your mouth, it's going to taste like sour green apple candy. Wonder where they get the flavor from. Ascorbic acid is our next acid on the list. Not as exciting as malic, not as exciting as citric. It's lighter, has a less intense acid bite compared to, say, a citric acid. It's defined as vitamin C, so I guess scurvy is out of the question if you have a lot of this acid. It's found in a good level of oranges, so if you want to add acidity to your cocktail, why wouldn't you just use oranges? Because oranges have a huge concentration of sugar. So it's sort of like your own sour mix. You've got yeah, a sour mix is going to be sour and sugar. So an orange does all of that together. The problem is the abundance of sugar outweighs that of the sour and the acidity. So when you're using oranges in a cocktail, say a screwdriver, it's typically being added as a sweetener versus a sour. But one of the reasons you're probably not adding additional sour to a screwdriver is both because you don't like sour drinks and because it's adding some acid and some acidity in there for you. It's just very light. Then you've got lactic acid. Lactic acid can be found to have the flavor of like sauerkraut or pickles or cheese. A lot of the savory ingredients. The one cocktail that outshines everything else when it comes to utilizing a lactic acid is a white Russian. Fermentation of lactose, mainly by lactic bacteria, create lactic acid. So when you have anything that's got like that fermentation process with those specific ingredients, you're gonna get lactic acid. But it's not that popular in cocktails. Acetic acid is your next category of acids. This one's pretty simple. It's found in vinegar. So you can see how it works into a Bloody Mary. The next one on the list, another simple one, is tartaric acid. That's like your sour grapes flavor. Found in grape-based products, so think vermouth. Vermouth has both malic acid and tartaric acid. And in the case of like Coke Americano, a little bit of quinine to give you that bitterness. The best example I could come up with for like a, a tartaric acid cocktail would probably be the Vesper Martini because it's got that Coke Americano bitterness and draw and that just the acidic draw to it. it makes it a little bit dry. And the last acid in this category would be the phosphoric acid. Um, you can actually buy acid phosphate. I don't sell this at Awesome Drinks yet. I was thinking about it, but I don't really know if people would even understand how to use it. So I'm not yet at this level. Uh, from Owl and Whale, this acid phosphate. It's a chemical-based acid, so you're not gonna find it out in the wild. It's not from fruits or anything like that. But it contributes a bone-dry flavor to your cocktails. If you really like a dry martini, a few drops of this, boom, bone dry. But you can find it in cocktails. It's hiding in there, and you have to know which type of cocktails to look for. I'll give you a hint, a Cuba Libre. Phosphoric acid is in high counts within, say, a soda. So if you're adding Coca-Cola to your drink, Mexican Coke, regular Coke, whatever, you're gonna get some phosphoric acid in there because it's a great preservative. Keeps the mold from growing in it. So that brings you around to sour mix. One of the fundamental sours within a cocktail. The way I define sour mix is one part lime, one part lemon, and two parts simple syrup, or rich simple syrup. The other way you can do it is all lemon and all lime, like two lemons, two sugar, two limes, two sugar. It depends on what your sour mix is focusing on. I like to bring them both together because it has a nice flavor that just builds out, say, a margarita a little bit. And yes, you can buy sour mix off the shelf. Most sour mixes, if you look at them in the store, are not really sour mixes. They're just a bunch of powders mixed together to give you the impression that you're having a sour mix. You can even buy them in a packet if you want to. Or, Royal Rose recently released a real sour mix cocktail mixer. Its ingredient list is organic cane sugar, filtered water, organic lime juice, organic lemon juice. So they took organic lemons and limes, squeeze them together, throw them in there with sugar, and they package it. And it doesn't even seem to have any other stabilizers in it, like uh, citric acid, because the base product already has that. This will smoke the face off of stuff like Rose's lime juice, which just tastes like fake, sweet, super sharp lime. It's gross. Throw it out, unless you're making a gimlet. Make your own or buy this. 
I don't know of any other alternatives out there that are actually real sour mixes that have real fruits in them. If you know, this is also organic. If you know of any others, write them in the comments so that I know and I can go research it. What this really does is simplify the ratio. So if you have a drink, the common ratio is two on one, two parts of spirit, one sour, one sweet. If this kind of already does the one and one for you, now you just need the spirit. Rum, sour, done. Tequila, sour, done. Whiskey, sour, done. Splash of bitters and it's even better. If you split these parts out, sir, let's say a daiquiri for instance. A daiquiri is most common squeeze lime juice, sugar, and rum. Maybe a little, little splash of salt to cut some of that bitterness out. It's another trick. So when you're doing something like that, you've made a sour mix. You're just building it as part of the drink. You can make it ahead of time and then put it into the drink if you want to do it faster. You also want to consider pairing when you're working with acids and sweets and the base spirit. So for instance, citric acid or specifically lemons pair really well with brown spirits. Vodkas, gins, rums, they tend to favor limes. Tequila, it's limes. Amaretto and some liqueurs, lemons. There's actually a book called The Food Bible that covers a lot of different pairings. So if you look through for what pairs well with lemons, you can then add in more and build a cocktail that has lemon with your brown spirit and something like cardamom or something that pairs with that well. It's pretty interesting. All those acids are gonna change how the consumer, how the imbiber tastes that drink. A lemon, a longer draw is gonna give them a different flavor than a lime. Acid phosphate is gonna give them more of that bone dry flavor. Orange juice is gonna do its own trick. It's hard to work with, but it's also tasty. So if you're making a cocktail and you find that it just feels off, something's wrong, it just feels not balanced, it's probably your acidity. Because people really have no problem with adding sugar to a cocktail. What a lot of inexperienced cocktail mixologists or home bartenders are missing is the component of acidity. Even if you don't like super sour cocktails, acidity is still there to pull back some of that sugar, rein it in a little bit to bring the balance. Even if it's not completely balanced, you can still have sugar heavy citrus on the low end, but at least the citrus is there to make up in the background to keep the drink from just feeling dominating in one direction. And next time we're going to explore the bitter side of cocktails using cocktail bitters. So if you want to start your journey as a cocktail home mixologist, boom, it's ready to go. Click below, buy the home bartender starter kit from awesomedrinks.com. There's more videos over here that you can watch to explore more about cocktails or just head to learn.awesomedrinks.com, start at the beginning of course one and blast through all the courses that are going to be available to you. And guess what? I made them all free. We're teaching you how to drink.